First, I would like to express my thanks and deep appreciation to Jai Endoskwi for giving us this opportunity to introduce our new research. I'm Dr. Shreef Abdesalam, consultant of hepatology and gastroenterology in tropical medicine and infectious disease department, Tanta University Hospital, Egypt. Today, Professor Firyad Kala and myself will be talking on behalf of our colleagues and the co-authors about our study that has recently been published by GI Endoscopy titled Randomized Controlled Trial of Scleral Ligation versus Band Ligation Alone for Eradication of Gastroesophageal Versus. Our country, Egypt, is burdened by having one of the highest prevalence rates of hepatitis C in the world, and therefore, the number of patients with cirrhosis and portal hypertension are large. We have a very high rate of patients coming into our hospital for management of bleeding esophageal and gastric versus. Following the control of the acute bleeding episode, they continue endoscopic sessions to eradicate the verses. This is time-consuming, stressing to the patient and costly. There are also a formidable number of patients with concomitant gastroesophageal verses. So, Professor Friel, can you tell the readers of GI endoscopy about the aims of our study? Yes. The current favored management for esophageal varices is band ligation, which has a high recurrence rate. Scleral ligation, which is a combination of the two techniques, band ligation and sclerotherapy, has been tried successfully in management of bleeding esophageal varices. The aim of the study was to evaluate the scleral ligation technique for management of bleeding gastroesophageal varices regarding efficacy, complications, variceal recurrence and survival. So what makes the idea of trying the scleral ligation technique attractive in the management of gastroesophageal varices? The idea behind this study is that ligation of varices, although effective in primary obliteration of the superficial varices and control of the initial bleeding, does not achieve obliteration of deeper varices or perforating veins and therefore the high recurrence. Injection of a sclerosant material below the ligated portion of the varix theoretically should affect these deeper veins, as well as prolong the contact time of the sclerosing material with the endothelial cells, increasing the efficacy. So you can tell the readers of Jai Endoscopy how was this study conducted? Yes, this was a prospective randomized interventional study conducted on 120 cirrhotic patients with bleeding gastroesophageal varices, whom we divided randomly into two groups of 60 patients each, a band ligation group and a scleral ligation group. All the cases included in the study had one or more gastroesophageal varices of either GOV1 or GOV2 type, with bleeding from above the GE junction. Any cases with a spurter below the GE junction were injected with cyanoacrylate and excluded from our study. Any cases with bleeding from purely esophageal varices or isolated gastric varices were also excluded. So, can you tell the readers of GI endoscopy that the scleral ligation technique used in our study? Yes, our technique we used is a very simple one. It offers no difficulty to any endoscopist trained in management of esophageal gastric varices. We perform band ligation for each variceal column in the usual way with deployment of one band per varix at a level of 3 to 5 centimeters above the GE junction. Then we follow that with an injection of 2 cc of ethanolamine only 85% intravariceally below the band at around 2 to 3 centimeters above the GE junction. This procedure is repeated every 2 to 3 weeks till eradication. So can you tell the readers of GI endoscopy about the outcomes of this technique? We compared the results in the two groups and found scleral ligation to reduce the total number of sessions required to reach variceal obliteration. The mean number of sessions we required was 2.22 versus 3.43 in the band ligation group. This led to a reduced time to obliteration, which became 8.64 weeks to the end point when using scleral ligation compared to the 15.6 of the band ligation group, and this was significantly less. The mean total number of bands were also less, the mean total number of bands deployed per patient was 8.8 .8 bands in comparison to 13.72 in the band ligation group, which was very significant. So can you tell the readers of GI endoscopy about the complications of this technique? The complications we recorded during the study were pyrexia, pain, ulceration, rebleeding, development or worsening of portal hypertensive gastropathy and gastric antral vascular ectasia. Cost and survival were comparable in the two groups. There was no significant difference between the two maneuvers regarding complications, recurrence rates or rebleeding rates. Therefore, we recorded no major complications. So what is about the future? We recommend in the future further studies on this promising technique. 
and managing of bleeding, gastroesophageal viruses, conduction of trials with different sclerosis materials in the hope of lowering the costs and the complications as well as the recurrence rates. So we would like to thank GI Endoscopy again for giving us this opportunity to introduce our new research. We can't forget the, the other authors. Of course, Professor Dr. Abdurrahman Kuptan, which was the cornerstone of our research team. And Professor Lai Mansour, we thank him for his brilliant ideas. And Professor Dr. Rehab Badawi for her hard work in this study. Dr. Muhammad Al Hindawi, the talented endoscopist. And Professor Hanan Al Bassat, which had made a great effort in this study. And also, we'd like to thank Professor Dr. Muhammad Al Badawi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Freya. Yeah.